Francis gets ready to move to the football and boots it away to get this football game started at Florida Field. Taken by Miami on the 13-yard line, and the return is across the 20 and up to the 25 by Darrell Oliver, a senior from Palacca, Florida. Vinny Testaverde in 1985 in his fifth in Heisman Trophy voting, and he is being boomed by the University of Miami as a Heisman candidate. His picture adorns a lot of magazine covers these days. And he should be publicized. As we look at those running backs I talked about earlier, Bratton, Highsmith, Irvin at the wide receiver. There we see the offensive line for the team. O'Neill, Alekna, Rikosi, O'Connor, and Froben, who is moving into a starting role as Miami goes with the eye on first down from the 25-yard line. They give off, it goes to the tailback straight up the middle, and he cuts across the 30 and up to the 35-yard line. Melvin Bratton, the junior from Miami, Florida, 217 pounds, who runs with authority. Well, a big hole right off the bat. The Kings get a first down. Melvin Bratton, we mentioned him earlier. I think he's a tremendous running back. Moten, Williams, Armstrong, Ross, White, Weston, and Charlton starting defensively for start of the deep guys. Mulberry, White, Oliver, and Williams. And they will be tested this afternoon by the new test of the lead. First and 10 on the 36th for the Hurricanes of Miami as they drive against the Florida Gators at Florida Field. A split backfield behind test of as his good dog goes to the fullback straight up the middle of the 40 yard line. Alonzo Highsmith, the big senior from Miami Columbus High School. Well, that time the Gators doing a better job at the line of scrimmage. There was a tremendous hole in the first play. The teams dominated the first play. The Gators come back and answer the challenge and stuff the second play. In 86, Highsmith, as you see, with uh, just five running plays, the ball will be spotted down. Now at the 39-yard line, it'll be second down. And uh, call it seven yards for the Hurricanes as they drive on Florida. Receivers left and right as Testaverde drops for his first pass of the ball game. It is complete out in the flat for a first down to Michael Irvin, number 47, the sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. Michael Irvin is the biggest wide receiver on the field this afternoon, six foot two, 200 pounds. Irvin's split out to the right. You see Testaverde, he's got Irvin in mind right from the beginning. Does a little bit of a square out route. Ricky Mulberry's playing a little loosely right there, and Irvin makes an easy reception. Have to play loose on a guy like Testaverde in the beginning. Irvin, six catches this year, averaging just under 17 years per catch. First and 10 on the 47-yard line with the Hurricanes in the eye formation. The give off goes to Bratton. Bratton tries it off the right side, and his been stacked up by the Gators after a short game. Lewis Oliver, the sophomore from Belgrade, the first guy to make the hit for the Florida Gators. Big hit by Lewis Oliver. The Gators' safeties are tremendous hitters. As you see, Melvin Bratton with his 11 attempts for 100 yards last week against South Carolina. But he had his headgear snap that time when he was hit by Lewis Oliver. There he's going to dip into the line of scrimmage. Keith Williams forces him along the sideline. Watch Lewis Oliver come up. Pop. Doesn't wrap the arms around, but there's Arthur White. To, oh, the ball is loose, but uh, looks like it got out of bounds before the Gators got possession. Second and 11 at the 46-yard line for the Hurricanes. The right side for them would be to the left as Testaverde drops the throw. He's got the time and unloads and oh! Incomplete. Or are they going to call it an incomplete pass or a fumble? Great, great play defensively by the University of Florida secondary. Jarvis Williams, number 26. What a headache he just delivered. My goodness. Right, this the back has an option you see Bratton coming out of the backfield he's working on a linebacker right now he breaks to the outside he could have gone inside watch that oh my goodness Jarvis Williams what courage Jarvis Williams a six foot tall 191 pound junior and uh, as you say he really put a hit on the University of Miami wide receiver no, it's, it's and uh, Bratt, it's a, Jim. coming out of the backfield Melvin Bratton number five and he is walking out under his own power they call it an incompletion so it'll be third down 11 the ball on the 46. I'll be very surprised if he can recover enough to come back and play in this first quarter it takes a while to shake those cobwebs out when you're hit like that again he had the option when he came out of the backfield to break inside or outside he was working on Scott Armstrong he decided to break outside but when he did he ran right into the gator cornerback Jarvis Williams Warren Williams will replace Bratton at the halfback spot Williams number 24 a slot offense Irvin 47 in the slot to the left side for Testaverde on third and 11 as he drops and looks and throws and it is almost intercepted by Florida 
It was intended for Michael Irvin, 47, thrown just a little bit high, almost picked off by the University of Florida's Adrian White, number two. And so that brings up fourth down, and that means that the Canes will have to kick. Okay, both teams won a little bit in that series. The Canes came out, moved the ball rather easily for a time, and then the Gators came back with some tremendous hits by Jarvis Williams and Lewis Oliver, got the momentum back for their defense. Now the Canes are forced to punt. Beagles will kick. He's from Scottsdale, Arizona. It's fourth and 11. The line of scrimmage is the 46-yard line of Miami. Low snap, but he gets it away nicely. It is high. And Ricky Mateel calls for the fair catch, and it will take a Florida bounce back from the 15 to about the 18-yard line, where it will be spotted down. And uh, Freddie Highsmith, good coverage on that play. Yeah, the Gators were only uh, 10 men on the field right there. Somebody was not on the field for the University of Florida. They did get a break. The ball bounced back, giving the Gators some rather decent as you can see, Kerwin Bell has had some good games against the University of Miami. He is 1-1 one one against the Canes in two starts. This is his third start against the Hurricanes. First and 10 on the 19-yard line for the Gators in their own territory with the I formation. They've got the A and W backfield, Williams and Williams, as Kerwin Bell is being pushed, throws on the run, and it is incomplete. It was intended for Wayne Williams coming out of the backfield. Jerome Brown, their Outland Trophy candidate, putting on a good pass rush right off the bat. Wayne Williams, Anthony Williams, Ricky Natale, Eric Hodges, and Rodney Jones, the skill position people, William Sims, McCarthy Davis, and big Jeff Zimmerman across the front for the Gators of Florida. Watch Jerome Brown, number 98 for the Hurricanes. He's a tremendous defensive tackle. Second, 10, ball remains on the 19-yard line. Four down linemen being used by the Hurricanes as Kerwin Bell looks at the Miami defense. And the give-off is going to go to Anthony Williams across the 20 to the 21-yard line. And it was pretty tough yardage as the uh, Hurricanes, Derwin Jones was the first guy to make the hit. You look at Hawkins, Brown, Jones, and Stubbs across the front for the Canes, Winston Moss, George Myra Jr., and Rod Carter are the linebackers, Ellis Brown, Benny Blades, and Tolbert Bain are the deep backs. The same deep backs that started for the Canes last year in Miami when they faced the Florida Gators. to play in the first quarter. No score between Florida and Miami, and the Gators are in possession as Kerwin Bell drops the throw and unloads, and it is complete to Anthony Williams, who is hit as he touches the football, so we'll call that as incomplete. I call it completion a little quick. Yeah, he didn't quite have the handle there. He looked like he was going to make the reception, but he just didn't make the grab. That brings up fourth down, and that means that the Gators will have to kick Jamie McAndrew as their punter, averaging just a little over 40 yards per boot. He is a freshman from Parker, Colorado. Went to Ponderosa High School. Well, Miami's defense has to feel pretty good. They came out there and shut Florida down in three plays, make some punt. And he gets it off. Miami's going to call for the fair catch on the 41-yard line, and calling for the fair catch is Brett Caravan, 33. And so that means that the uh, University of Miami Hurricanes take over the football with good field position on the 41-yard line in their own territory. A rather uh, shaky punt there, end over end, 38 yards. Hurricanes have great field position on their own 41. Anytime you're on your own 40-yard line or better, that's tremendous field position. There's been a test of Verdi now as he tells Williams, 24, to move to the other side. They go with a split back behind the young man from Elmont, New York, on first down as he drops and looks and throws, and it is incomplete. Intended for Charles Henry, the tight end, number 82, but falls is incomplete. We'd like to say that Jim and I will be picking our Mid-State Federal Player of the Game in the fourth quarter, so we'll be keeping an eye on which Gators are doing well and making that selection during the last quarter of the ball game. Again, a big hit by the Gators secondary. That time it was Adrian White. The loser in each of the past three seasons in this game has then gone on to win 10 straight. Second and 10 on the 41-yard line. And the give off goes to Warren Williams off the left side. He's stacked up right away and brought down by the University of Florida Gator defense. Scott Armstrong, number 57. Watch Scott Armstrong, Jim, at the inside linebacker position. 
He's going to make a grab with his arm right there, and it's Bratton that he knocks down. Well, there's Melvin Bratton back in the game after he was hit so hard on the previous series. I didn't think he'd be back in that soon. Third and ten, the ball on the 41-yard line, still for Miami. Melvin Bratton averaging a little over nine yards per carry last week against the University of South Carolina at Columbia. Oh! And third, he's in the fifth, and still on his feet for a down behind the line of scrimmage. And the guy that finally got him down was 26, Jarvis Williams. Testaverde, with all that size, pretty tough to bring down at 6'5 and close to 220. He was, and there was a bit of confusion there. The Hurricanes come out with three wide receivers. The Gators aren't exactly sure on how to execute that blitz, but there comes Clifford Charlton untouched. Jarvis Williams, the cornerback, coming on a blitz. Very rarely do you see your cornerback sneak in there on a blitzing situation. Fourth down, 19 on the 32-yard line. Eagles gets it off. It is high and will hit down at the 25 and takes a Florida bounce back to the 30-yard line. And down fast for Miami, number 48, Bubba McDowell. Again, Beagle's not getting off a good punt as well. Both teams are uh, hampered right now with not having an excellent punting game. And they're giving their opponents excellent field position on offense. One of the great things Ray Criswell did for the Florida Gators last year was to pin the other team's offense deep in their own territory every time he punted. He was a great weapon. First and 10 at the 30. That was only a 32-yard punt, I believe. The pitch was going to go to Wayne Williams, trying it off the left side, and hits to about the 32-yard line. So a tough couple of yards for him as Jerome Brown, the big senior from Brooksville, makes the hit. Let's talk about those Gator uh, running backs. Last week, from the tailback position, three young Gator tailbacks combined for over 200 yards rushing. That's a great start. It certainly is. Woody Stevens would like to have horses like that. Second and eight on the 32-yard line as Kerwin Bell looks over the University of Miami defensive unit. Bell to throw and does, and it is incomplete. A little bit low as it was intended for Eric Hodges, 10, and falls is incomplete. Rod Carter, number 91, doing an excellent job from his outside linebacker position on coverage. Right now, the Canes are doing an excellent job covering the Gators in the passing game and putting some pressure on Kerwin Bell. There you see what those three young tailbacks did last week. Wayne Williams, Octavius Gould, and Tony Lomack picking up 207 yards against Georgia Southern. Third down and eight. The ball on the 32 for Florida. Driving against Miami. They're in their own territory. No score in the game. Thurwin Bell being hit and brought down way behind the line of scrimmage by Big Jerome Brown. 285-pounder. He's an Outland Trophy candidate. And right now, he's dominating the line of scrimmage. On every play, he's had some pressure. He swings from the outside right there. Comes from the outside. There's a back trying to pick him up. Pick him up. Wayne Williams. it off. Pyramid 33 takes it down at the 36-yard line and is driven out of bounds on the far side of the field in front of the Miami men in the vicinity of the 40 and Walter Bird, 79, takes him down. That's pretty impressive. Bird's the long snapper. A lot of hustle. He's got to concentrate to get the ball back to the punter quickly and efficiently and then he's got to hustle down the field and he was the first man down there. Nice job, Walter Bird. Nine minutes, 12 seconds left to play in the first Testaverde looking at the three down line and being thrown up by Florida and the give off is going to go to Alonzo Highsmith and he is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Getting in there was big Ron Moten, number 58. My goodness, I hope we get a, another chance to look at this one. Perhaps we won't, but what Ron Moten did was he stuffed the offensive back right into the backfield, threw him down and then looked for the ball carrier and, and got him as well. Watch on the top of your camera uh, on your monitor right there you'll see the running back Highsmith look at Moten he's getting tackled by the running back he still bounces right up to make the tackle what a play by Ron Moten well, it's cooling off a little the Florida field the clouds are coming in the lights are on second and 13 at the 39 test the dirty throws and it is complete to Michael Irvin 
Irvin. Irvin's at the midfield stripe and is taken down as he goes into Florida territory to the 44-yard line by Adrian White, the senior from Orange Park. There you see the clouds. The lights are on at Florida Field this afternoon. We had rain here last week for the Georgia Southern game. When that sun disappears behind the clouds, I think the temperature dropped about 15 degrees. It's really a lot cooler right here right now. That was a 17-yard gain. Testaverde had plenty of time to look out to find Urban. Urban did a nice job of beating Jarvis Williams in the flat. First and 10 on the 44 of Florida for Miami as Testaverde looks for somebody and bounces into the air and is picked off again by Testaverde, who is running with the football himself, crosses the 40 and steps out of bounds in front of the Florida bench between the 32 and the 33-yard line. Probably been uh, 15 or 20 years since he caught his own pass. This one is tipped by the rush. You see Clifford Charlton coming from the outside, being blocked nicely. The ball is batted away by 96, I think, at the line of scrimmage. It looked like Jeff Roth, the nose guard, batted the ball in there. Tester Birdie has 4-8 speed in the 40. He knows what to do with the ball when he gets a chance to run with it. He'd rather not run with it, but it's a 13-yard game. And a first down. 31-yard line of Florida for the Miami Hurricanes. The give-off is going to go to Alonzo Highsmith, and on the counter, he goes inside the 25-yard line. Eight minutes left to play first quarter. Still no score between Florida and Miami. And it's Rock'em Sock'em right now down there on that field. Absolutely two heavyweights, two of the better, if not two of the best teams in the United States of America trying to knock each other off the line of scrimmage right now. Second down and three on the inside the 25-yard line for the University of Miami as they split Irvin out to the right side. You're looking at the end zone shot there. A big number five, Melvin Bratton back in the ball game at the tailback spot. He takes it, goes right the middle, off the right side, heads to the 10-yard line, crosses the 10, and fights down into the end zone. And there's a signal for a touchdown on the far side of the field by one of the officials. Now it looks like a touchdown. Doesn't seem to be a flag on the play. Alonzo Highsmith on the lead block on the draw. This is a lead draw. Watch Alonzo Highsmith go through and pick up a linebacker. Boom! What a block right there. Then Bratton's in the secondary. Jukes, Mulberry, Adrian White with great speed. Just can't quite get to him. What an effort by Melvin Bratton. Tremendous effort by that young running back. 24-yard run. Selig's try for the extra point is good, and the score is Miami 7 and Florida nothing. We'll be right back, but first, we'll take time out for these messages. The teams have uh, got control of this ball game right now. As Selig gets ready to move to the football and kick it away. It'll be taken by Florida at the 6, the 10, at the 15, at the 20, out of bounds along the near side at the 22-yard line. The University of Florida, so they take over the football at the 22. It'll be first and 10, and that was Dwayne Glover, 33, on the return. Well, if you'll remember last year's ball game, the ebb and flow, the way the momentum changed, the Hurricanes controlling the first quarter, the Gators controlled the second quarter, the Hurricanes controlled the third quarter, and the Gators came back in the fourth to win that game last year. Let's see if that, that's going to happen this afternoon. Right now, the Kings are in control. Florida, 21 games unbeaten here at Florida Field. First and 10 on the 22, and the give-off is going to go to Wayne Williams, and Wayne Williams takes it up the middle and gets some yards on the play as he crosses the 25-yard line to the 27. I think Galen Hall might have uh, told Kerwin, let's don't get too greedy out there. Let's try and see if we can crank that running game up a little bit. Obviously, if you can crank a running game up, you not only control the ball, but you keep it away from Benny Testaverde. Second down five on the 27 now for the Gators as they drive against the Hurricanes of Miami. The Canes with four down linemen defensively, and Kerwin Bell's give off is going to go to young Mr. Williams as um, that was Wayne Williams with a football. And he hits in there for maybe a yard gain. Dan Cilio, a junior from Stanford, Connecticut, number 93, makes the tackle. Gators had some success with the first running play, but right there the Kings took control and shut down that running play. It's 
third down and four. The ball on the 28-yard line now for Florida. And they're deep in their own territory as Kerwin Bell looks to throw. He's got the time. There's a flag, and he throws out in the flat. It is complete to Wayne Williams. The 35, the midfield strike, the 40, the 30, the 25, the 20, the 10, the 5, and into the end zone. But there was a flag on the play, so it's going to come all the way back, and it looks like it's going to be a hold against Florida. directly across from the offensive center. He's the one charged with detecting holding or not, and that's all he looks for. And he's looking right into that offensive line play, and evidently one of the Gators grabbed one of the team defenders. We can't quite see it right there. Perhaps Jerome Brown, number 98, was hit. Nonetheless, Kerwin did deliver for the first down. Wayne Williams is off to the races if the play had counted, but ifs and buts were Christmas nuts. What a wonderful world this would be. Uh, are you going to call that one back? So it comes all the way back now to the 17-yard line. Third down and 15 for Florida. Well, the key here is, is don't make a critical mistake. Not only try and pick it up, but don't make a big mistake. Bell hit and brought down way behind the line inside the five-yard line. That's what I was talking about. Either give the ball up on an interception or a sack. They treated Kerwin Bell with no respect right there. They tried to drive him into the turf, which is what you're supposed to do on defense. Good, clean play, but just a hard, aggressive play. So that brings up fourth down and the kicker, Jamie McAndrew. Now, Jerome Brown is just getting through immediately. They're not even slowing him down at this point. 13-yard loss. That's the mistake I was talking about. Now they're even putting more pressure on the punter, Jamie McAndrew. Snap is going to come from Walter Bird at the five, and McAndrew gets it off. Perriman will take it down at the 44. Running back is at the 45, trying to turn up field, and he is pushed out of bounds in front of the Miami bench at about the 37-yard line, and there is a flag on the play, and it looks like it came at the 39, and it may be for a flip. Kerry Watkins was the man who took him out. He almost got to that wall. He almost got outside. Kerry Watkins, uh, tremendous speed. He's a backup freshman cornerback. 39-yard uh, kick out of the end zone. A nice job by McAndrew driving that ball from deep in his own end zone. And with the penalty tagged on, the teams are going to be backed up into their own territory. Five minutes and 13 seconds to play in the first quarter, and the Canes are leading the University of Florida by a 7-0 score. There's that clipping call against Miami. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, right there. It was uh, Dwayne Ferguson, Florida's uh, second-string fullback, in on the punt coverage team, was hitting the back, and there was a clipping penalty detected. First and 10 at the 46 for Miami. They're in their own territory. A split backfield behind Testaverde. The give off is going to go to Highsmith, turning it outside and crosses the midfield stripe before he is bounced out of bounds by Lewis Oliver, number 18, and Ricky Mulberry, number 32. Miami very impressive right now with their offensive uh, game plan, running, throwing the football. Very efficient with what they're trying to do. Well, they're coming off a win last week against the University of South Carolina, 34-14. Florida coming off a victory over Georgia Southern, 38-14. It'll be second down five at the 49 for Miami, and they have moved across the midfield stripe into Florida territory. And Smith comes to the near side, and he is back up and hit and hit hard. Adrian White gets in there. Along with Steve Stein with Jarvis. Well, that support has to come up rapidly from the secondary. You can't let the guy turn the corner. You got a pressure from the secondary. They get the line blocked, but look who comes up to make the play Jarvis Williams and Adrian White. That's what they have to do. They have to come up strong. But then they come up, they come up, they come up, and they draw a play pass on them. What a pressure situation for a safety and a cornerback to be in. Third and four for Miami as tested early.
yardage in the secondary. Fourth down, will Miami punt? That's the call, and Jimmy Johnson is making that decision right now. now they might get a little greedy right here and uh, go for it. They have a chance to pin the Gators deep in their own territory, but they're going to go for it on fourth and uh, looks like a good yard. They're at the 46-yard line. Fourth and a yard for the Canes. They're going for it. And there's a timeout being called by and a yard at the 46. The teams are going for it. They lead seven to nothing, and they're on the Florida side of the 50. Many Testaverdes give is going to go to Highsmith, and he is stacked up at the line. I don't think he made. I don't it. think he made it either. He didn't make it. The Florida defense has held. Well, I think Jimmy Johnson got a little bit greedy right there. He thinks he can go in maybe and uh, get another quick seven on the board right there. But he also had a chance to pin the Gators deep in their own territory. The Florida offense hadn't accomplished much to this point, but he decides to go for it. Of course, you got a 235-pound back right there. He doesn't get off the ground. We can't quite see. Rondy Weston's in there making a, a wrap-up on the play. The give-off is going to go to Gould, and Gould gets a couple of yards as he moves it from the 45 to the 48-yard line for Florida. He is the freshman tailback from Browns Mills, New Jersey, a parade All-American. Last week picked up 71 yards and 15 carries. That's just under five yards every time he touched the football. So much emotion is involved in these great interstate rivalries and Florida-Miami matchup. That was a great emotional lift that the Gator defense gave, gave the Gator offense see if they can make something happen. Second and seven at the 48-yard line. Kerwin Bell's got the time. Throws, and it is. And another Gator picks it off at the 45-yard line. That would be Anthony Williams, who came up for the football. Close to a first down. And uh, there's three minutes and 22 seconds left to play in this first quarter. The Canes are leading the Gators 7-0. And the ball bounces into the air and then is picked off by Anthony Williams, the young man out of Tampa plant, and he carries forward to the 45-yard line. So it's third down and less than a yard to go for the Gators. Clifton Reynolds, the tight end, was the primary receiver. And the give-off is going to go to Wayne Williams. He's across the 40, the 30 down the sideline, and goes out of bounds right here in front of the Florida crowd on the near sideline as he steps out of bounds. Just couldn't walk that tightrope. Well, again, Wayne Williams, look at the block. Look at the block by the fullback. Again, you have to have the blocking by the lead back. Wayne Williams just cannot get his balance. He's leading, he's trying, but he's going to fall out of bounds. A big play. The Gators offense has taken advantage of the emotion given them by Clifford Charlton, who you see right there in the Gator defense. 19-yard gain. First and 10 for the Gators at the 28. Kerwin Bell with the eye. The up back is Anthony Williams. Wayne Williams gets the call. And a fumble on the play. And the football was fumbled at the 26-yard line. And Miami has recovered a big defensive play as Blades picks it off at the 36. Now, Billy Blades picks the ball off the ground. Wayne Williams is going to get hit by, uh, who is that, number 91 for the Keys? and 10 for the Hurricanes at the 28. The give-off is going to go to Highsmith, and on the counter, he goes across the 30-yard line to the 31-yard line. Scott Armstrong and big Ron DeWitt, 68, in there to make the hit. And Ron Moten played a nice game. Ron Moten from Clearwater, Florida. Second down now coming up for the Canes. Six to go at the 32-yard line. The Gators with a three-down lineman. As the lines get ready to collide, and the give-off is going to go to Melvin Bratton off the left side across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Before he is brought down, short of the first down. And let's give that one again to Rodney Weston getting some help, too, um, on that play. From a couple of other big linemen, uh, in there, big Jeff Rock. Doing a nice job against Jeff Rock. Third and one at the 36.
six-yard line for Miami. And the give off again is going to go to Bratton. And let's see if he got it or if the Gators held. It looks like the Gators might have held. Gators did hold on that one. He did not get it. And here comes the funny thing for Miami. I tell you what, that Gator defense deserves a big salute right now because they're playing a powerhouse. They're playing against a powerhouse offense. Melvin Bratton, there's the big fullback, Highsmith, leading. Jeff Roth just zips around Ricosi, who is a great offensive center for the Hurricanes. Jeff Roth makes the play in the backfield. Jeff Beagle's the punter on fourth down. The line of scrimmage, the 36-yard line, as he waits for the snap and gets it off. It booms high. Ricky Mateo. Watches it go, and it bounces back from the 10 to about the 13-yard line. Almost uh, 
He almost had the cornerback beat right there. Testa Verde had all kinds of time. I think it was Jarvis Williams on the coverage. Jarvis turned him loose the last second as he made his turn up the field. Testa Verde just laid it out there too far. What a powerful arm he had. Second down and set on the 46-yard line again for Miami. As we begin the second quarter, the Canes up 7-0 on the Gators. And Vinny Testa Verde of Miami throws. Testa Verde, the ball just slipped out of his hands. It looked like he threw it way over the head of Blades, his wide receiver. The ball just, what they call, takes off on him right here. Jarvis Williams is standing out there and says, my goodness, look what I found. A nice run by Jarvis. He's going to make a big cut back right here and pick up another 10 or 15 yards. The Gators hustling down to make some blocks for him. Only the tight end has the speed to come over and make the play, and he does as he knocks Jarvis out on the 21-yard line, a 36-yard run after the interception. First and 10 at the 21 for Florida in Miami territory. The give-off is going to go to the tailback who is stacked up as he uh, hits the line. That is Anthony Williams, 36. Jerome Brown brings him down. Well, we talked about the quarterback matchup. Let's see what's happening right now. Testa Verde, 3 for 8 for 39 yards. Irwin Bell, 2 for 5 for 9 yards. I think one of the stories that's not told in the stats right there is Testa Verde's getting the time to throw and Kerwin Bell is not. Second down, 10. Ball remaining on the 21-yard line as we look at Kerwin Bell with the eye formation. Kerwin Bell looks to throw and does, and it is incomplete. Held on to, but not long enough by Anthony Williams, 36, and he was really getting the pressure from the Miami defense from George Myra Jr., 45. A little too hot for him, but you got to catch that ball. You need to catch it in a big series, an important series like this, as your team is trying to move into scoring position. He just couldn't quite come up with it. Kerwin kind of short armed it because he was getting some rush and really zipped that ball in there. George Myra Jr.'s father, a great quarterback for the University of Miami, and later in professional football, third and ten, the ball on the 21 yard line still for Florida as Kerwin Bell unloads and it is incomplete. The intended receiver was Wayne Williams, 23, coming out of the backfield, but it falls as incomplete as the pressure being put on by the University of Miami. And Florida's going to go for the field goal, and here is Jeff Dawson from Lantana, Florida, walking on. Well, last week, the uh, Hurricanes uh, shut out the Gamecocks in South Carolina, six straight consecutive offensive series, making them either punt or, or the Gamecocks gave up the ball with a fumble or an interception. So you're looking at a terrific defense with the Hurricanes. There is the attempt at field goal by Jeff Dawson, and it is no good. Flag on the play remains. There's a flag on the play. A flag on the play, and let's see what the call is. Roughing the kicker. What a critical mistake. Five yard, unintentional, I think is what they're calling. So it's going to be a five yard penalty, automatic first down. So Florida gets a little bit of a break here. The football moves down to between the 15 and the 16-yard line. And that was the call against Miami. Well, my mistake, it's not an automatic first down. All that, all that happens is he gets another opportunity a little closer in. And this time, the kick is going to come from the 22-yard line, so it'll be a 32-yard attempt by Jeff Dawson. Dawson's foot is into it. It's got the distance, and it is good. And the score is now Miami 7, the Florida Gators on the board with 3. We'll be right back after these messages. 7 to 3, and so that means the Gators' John David Francis will be kicking. 12 minutes, 13 seconds left to play in the first half. That uh, three points, a, deck, a direct result of a turnover. Credit the Gator defense for that three points. 32-yard field goal by Jeff Dawson. Puts Florida on the board as Francis kicks off. And it goes across the goal. A lot of distance on it. No run back on that one. As John David Francis got his foot into it. 
And Darrell Oliver, 37, just watched it roll on by. You can't ask any more from your kickoff man now that he kicks off from the 35 to kick it in the opponent's end zone and force him to come out from the 20. Four plays, five yards, 53 seconds possession. Jeff Dawson with a field goal, and here is Vinny Testaverde. First and 10 on the 20 now for the Miami Hurricanes. They will use Darrell Oliver, 37, as the up back behind Vinny Testaverde in the eye. And the give-off is going to go to Warren Williams, and he comes up the middle across the 30 and to the 32-yard line before he's brought down. But he's got the first down. Well, again, they're in the secondary. The secondary's making the play. Uh, just a tremendous job by that offensive line. Uh, David Alekna, Greg Ricosi, Paul O'Connor, John O'Neill. Just doing a nice job against the uh, Gator defense. Darrell Oliver throwing a nice job. Uh, nice block. Uh, Williams was one of the better backs in the Gator game last year for the Hurricane. First and ten on the 32-yard line for Miami. As Testaverde's give off goes to Oliver, who cuts up field across the 35 of the 36-yard line before the University of Florida brings him down. And Arthur White, 43, makes the hit. I'm so impressed with this Miami Hurricane team right now. They're just, uh, they got some tremendous talent out there. Galen Hall, Mark 17, 1-1 one one over the 84-85 season. The best coaching record in the country for that time frame. What a great job he's done here at Florida. Second and five on the 36-yard line. to give off again to Warren Williams as he fights across the 40. And is stopped by Keith Williams, the big senior left tackle from Milton, Florida, and Jeff Roth, a sophomore middle guard from Seminole. Jeff Roth got some consideration for our Mid-State Federal Player of the Game last week, and again, he'll be under consideration uh, this afternoon as we look for that Mid-State Federal Player of the Game. Third down and two, the ball on the 30. Testaverde with a slot to the right side. As he looks at Florida, he pitches to Warren Williams. Williams turning the near side and hit and brought down, but it looks like he's got the first down. Making the hit, Adrian White. Ricky Mulberry. He's got the first down to the... Looks like they're going to spot it down at the 43-yard line. Now the Canes did a great job right there with the tight end and tackle, double-teaming the outside linebacker, Ron Moten, and getting around the corner. It's tough when you got two big guys on you, and the Canes did a great job of turning that corner on offense. Again, the eye being used. Testaverde, 33, Perriman at the bottom of your screen on first down. He looks and goes long, 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 and it's going to be intercepted by Florida. And picking it off once again is Jarvis Williams. Jarvis coming up the near sideline, comes out in front of the Florida bench as he crosses the 35 to the 36-yard line. And two interceptions this afternoon for Mr. Williams. Testaverde has all the time in the world to look down the field, and he wants to bomb. Jarvis Williams is making the coverage right there. Jarvis has a read on the ball all the way. Again, we're talking about turnovers, field position. The Gator defense right here gets a turnover for that guard offense. There's going to be a penalty on the play. Darrell Oliver and one of the Gators were involved in some fisticuffs, and the Gators... Uh, as always, made the second hit. Penalty going against the University of Miami, and that moves it across the midfield stripe into the 49 of Miami. The point I was trying to make is generally when you retaliate, when you're hit with what you consider a cheap shot, uh, regardless of whether it is or not, and you respond, you're usually going to get a penalty if you retaliate. But right there, the Gators came out uh, and won that uh, penalty march off, and it's in Hurricane territory. Moves to the 49. Jarvis Williams, as you can see, second interception today. First down and 10 at the 49 for the Gators. They trail the Canes of Miami up 7-3 with nine minutes 
minutes and 56 seconds to play in the second quarter. Well, the thing that has to get your attention, even though Testaverde did throw the interception on that series, and he threw one on the series before, he's got so much time back there, it's scary to think what he might accomplish when he starts hitting his receivers. Brett Wickman, 20, bottom of your screen, the I formation, Kerwin Bell's give is going to go off to number 37, and that would be Tony Lodback, the freshman from Tallahassee Leon High School. 5'8", 178-pounder, averaged almost 11 yards per carry last week. Another one of those young Gator tailbacks that gained over 200 yards against Georgia Southern. Lomax not a big running back at all. 5'8", 178, but he's got some speed burner speed. Seven yards on the carry, second and three at the 41. This time it is a Octavius Gould, and Gould down to the 30-yard line for another first down. Benny Blades, the free safety junior from Fort Lauderdale, brings him down. Watch the blocks. Watch Bob Sims, number 77, and Jimmy, no, it's David Williams, number 73. They're going to make the big blocks up there for Lomack. No one is even near him. He's in the secondary before he gets popped in the back. An 11-yard gain by Lomax. First and 10 at the 30. 8.50 to play in the second period, and it is once again Octavius Gould getting the call. Picks up some tough yardage. Jerome Brown, big senior from Brooksville, makes the hit for Miami. Fernando High School, Brooksville, Florida. Jerome Brown, he's got to be one of the best players uh, that Fernando has ever uh, some great ones, they sure have. Second down, seven ball on the 27 yard line for Florida. Goal 31, as you take a look at our end zone shot, dots the eye behind Kerwin Bell, the quarterback, and Bell rolling, throws a quick one out in the flat. He's got his fullback coming out of the backfield, Cedric Smith, number 39, the freshman from Enterprise, Alabama. John L. Williams last year got All-American notice because he could catch the ball coming out of the flat. Your fullback is so important catching the ball. Not only does he have to run and block, but he's got to catch the ball. And Anthony Williams does a terrific job right there catching the ball and almost picking up the first down. It's third and inch at the 20 for the Gators of Florida. Again, the eye being used by Kerwin Bell. Frank McCarthy, the center, up over the football. And the give off goes to Gould, and Gould's gonna be close to the first down. Let's see if he's got it. If he got it, it was because of second effort on his own part. He was hit in the backfield, put one hand down, and continued toward the line of scrimmage, almost crossing that 20 yard line. It's gonna be very close. He needed to, to make inches. Let's see if he made it. Well, I think they're gonna have to bring the chain gang across and check it out to see if he's got it or not. Kerwin Bell standing right there. That's George Myra Jr., 45 to the left. He got it. Picks up the first down. Keeps Florida's drive alive. Eight minutes and one second to play in the first half. And the Hurricanes of Miami do first blood. They lead by a score of seven to three on the Gators. The Gators on the board by virtue of Jeff Dawson's 32-yard field goal. The Gators have yet to be consistent on offense in the first quarter and much of the second quarter, but right now they're looking like a terrific offensive unit. Let's see if they can proceed right into that end zone. High formation being used, four down linemen, the Miami defensive scheme, and Bell and Lowe intended for Hodges, and it falls as incomplete. Hodges on the post. Tolbert Bain, who's a coverage man for Miami, number 18. Kerwin makes a quick pitch action to the right, takes one step back. Hodges is sprinting towards the goal post. He has Bain beaten badly, but Kerwin just doesn't get the ball to him. They just weren't quite able to connect, but Hodges was wide open. Boy, Kerwin's licking his chops about getting another opportunity to do that. All right, let's give you some information. We just received Daryl Oliver has been ejected on the 20 for Florida as they drive against Miami. It is good with the carry to the 18-yard line, and George Myra Jr. makes the tackle. George Myra Jr. turns a, maybe a 12 or 15-yard gain into a two-yard gain. He came off the spot just at the last minute to make that tackle, or Gould would still be running with the ball. Nice play by George Myra Jr. Seven carries for 20 
six yards this afternoon. A split backfield behind Kerwin Bell. As Bell looks, can't find anybody. And now he throws a quick one. And he's got his man inside the 10 yard line and down to the eight yard line. Goes number 31, Octavius Goes. Coming out of the backfield. All right, the football. All right, Kerwin Bell and all right offensive line. They give him some protection. Look at Sims and Jimmy Davis and McCarthy fighting. There's big David Williams driving his man to the inside. Kerwin gets that extra second, gives a little pump, finds the young freshman. What a heady young freshman. He continues with his pattern. He's looking for the football, and Kerwin Bell delivers to him. A big first down by the Gators. First and goal at the eight-yard line for Florida. Eye formation. The give-off is going to go to goal. Goes straight up the middle into the one-yard line. Flag on the play. And it could have been. We'll have to wait and see. It is a motion call against Florida. Yeah, they caught the fullback. I think it was David Ferguson just leaning a little bit before the snap. Uh, they say that turnovers and mistakes uh, come back to haunt you in big ball games. Watch the fullback. Well, I didn't see him right there. I don't know who moved. Uh, Cedric Smith was playing the fullback position. It looked like he jumped a split second before the ball was snapped. So. It was a good call by the officials. First and goal at the 13-yard line. Look at that difference. What, what, what do you get to the two-yard line? Would have been some could have been. Would have been some could have been. High formation now for Florida as they drive on Miami. And the give-off again goes to Octavius Gould, and he is dragged down behind the line of scrimmage. Good penetration by Randy Shannon, the strong side linebacker, number 22 for the University of Miami. Yeah, he was dogging from his linebacker position. Whenever a linebacker comes in, they call it a dog. Whenever someone from the secondary comes in, they call it a blitz. That was just the strong side linebacker shooting the gap right there. I don't know if he was guessing or if he was given that responsibility, but he sure made a big play. Five minutes and 45 seconds to play in the first half. The Hurricanes lead the Gators 7-3. Florida with the football, second down on the 11-yard line. Octavius Gould, and Octavius Gould is stacked up, brought down. Right outside the 10-yard line. So, for Octavius Gould, a tough effort. Gilbert Bain and Derwin Jones make the hit for Miami. Bain 18, Jones 86. There you see the story up on the board as Galen Hall talks with his coaches. Clifton Reynolds comes in at the tight end position of Till to the left of your screen as Kerwin Bell is looking and brought down behind the line of scrimmage and bring him down Dan Stubbs, 96, junior left end for the Miami Hurricanes. And that brings on Jeff Dawson once again. Now oh, just a great play by Stubbs. It looked like Jeff Zimmerman had him one on one right there, but Stubbs got on the corner and hit Kerwin deep in the backfield. Big loss for the quarterback, and now Jeff Dawson comes out the three-pointer. Well, the kick is going to come from the 29-yard line, so that means it is a 39-yard attempt, and his foot is into it. It has the distance. Let's see if it got it, and it did. And the Hurricanes lead 7-6 to six at Florida Field. The Gators begin to regain some momentum, Jim Yarko. Well, momentum is so critical in any ball game, and uh, the Miami just dominated the first quarter. The Gators came back somewhat, but Miami's still in control of this ball game being returned by Bratton, and Bratton gets across the 20 to the 21-yard line before he is brought down by Florida's special team. So they take him down, and that means that Miami puts the ball in play at the 24-yard line. That was a 23-yard return. Hard to believe here we are with only four minutes left in the second quarter, and Vinny Testaverde has only 39 yards passing, and Kerwin Bell has only 25. These are the two of the better, if not the best, passers in college football, and the yards just have not been there for them this afternoon. First and 10 at the 24-yard line for the Miami Hurricanes. Vinny Testaverde is the quarterback, and his get-off goes to Alonzo Highsmith, who hits the line of scrimmage and simply slips at the right at the line. He might have picked up a yard, slid forward perhaps.
So that brings up second down. They give him a yard. That'll mean nine yards to go on the 25-yard line as we look at Jimmy Johnson surveying his troops as they come out of the huddle. And he's got to be pleased with what he's looking at. Well, they took control at the beginning, but then Florida began to make a comeback, and they regained some momentum on that last drive after the Jarvis Williams interception. Long pass, incomplete. It was intended for Michael Irvin, and Dose is incomplete, and that was Lewis Oliver, the sophomore from Belgrade, number 18, who was over there. That was a 12-play drive, 42 yards, 5 minutes, 36 seconds, possession time, Jeff Dawson's field goal does the job. Adrian White, the free safety's on a blitz. You see him get tackled literally in the backfield right there. Look at Lewis Oliver make the big hit on Irvin, was it out there? Number 47. 47 Michael Irvin. Third down and nine on the 25-yard line as Testaverde looks at the Florida defense. Testaverde looking to throw and does, and it is incomplete. It was intended for Brian Blades, number nine, but goes as incomplete again. Lewis Oliver right there to really put the pressure on. Big standing O for that Gator defense. Not often do you go out on the field and make Miami give the ball up after three offenses, offensive attempts. There's some Gator fans that are seeing the momentum turn and that got them excited. Jeff Beagles is the punter. Scottsdale, Arizona, his hometown, waits for the snap and kicks it. Gets it off way high. And it will hit down and roll, taking a Miami roll down just outside the 20 to 22 yard line. Well, there's a 10 yard mistake. Jarvis Williams and Ricky Mateel did not communicate. They were misunderstanding each other as they were signaling for the fair catch. So no one caught the ball and the ball bounced for another 15 yards. 44 down there in a hurry. Steve Stafford, and so is number 55 for Miami, Danny Marsical. 42-yard punt, of which, what, 12, 15 yards was on the roll. First and 10 at the 23 for Florida. And they're in their own territory as Kerwin and Bell goes with the eye formation and a slot in the seal 89 to the right of your screen as the slot back. The give-off goes to the tailback straight up the middle, and we're talking about Wayne Williams, the sophomore from Titusville, who gets a little yardage on the play. And Derwin Jones, 86, a junior with the University of Miami, number 86, brings him down. Well, the Gators did have a good series the last time they had the football. Let's see if they can put two back-to-back. -back. Less than three minutes to play in the first half. The Hurricanes lead 7-6. Hurricanes still stay with a four-down lineman. The I formation with a slot being used by Florida. Kerwin Bell looks, and he's got his man coming out of the backfield. Cedric Smith, number 39, for the first down. Across the 35-yard line to the 37. Tobert Bain, Virginia right corner, number 18, making the tackle for Miami. Good possession football. Try and hit the back, maybe the tight end. Move the chains, move the chains. That's what that offense is thinking. First and 10 on the 37. The give off goes to Wayne Williams off the right side. Gets across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Rod Carter, weak side linebacker, sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, makes the tackle. Big Dwayne Ferguson, number 38, enters the ball game. Cedric Smith comes out. The Gators using five or six uh, running backs. As we look at the Testaverde Bell matchup, still not a whole lot of yards produced by those young men through the air this afternoon. Second and six at the 41, and the give off is going to go to the tailback, and that is Wayne Williams again as he is hit and stacked up by Dan Cilio, the uh, junior left tackle from Stanford, Connecticut. Sides against the University of Miami will be marked off a five yard penalty. Let's tip our hats to the defenses. What do you say, Jim Gallagher? Both of these defensive units have just played magnificently, and they're not playing against any slouches, are they? They're playing against some magnificent, magnificent offensive talent, and both defenses are doing a terrific job. They're well prepared, both very, very well prepared. Of course, you must remember this, too, that all week at practice, the defense, since both teams run that similar passing type offense, they see passing. Very true. So they're used to working against that, but if you had to give out first half game balls, it would probably have to go to the entire defensive unit from coaching staff to both squads. I agree. Second, less than a yard on the 46-yard line for Florida. 
as Kerwin Bell rolls and throws, and it is incomplete. Intended for number 38 coming out of the backfield, Jermaine Ferguson, at the fullback position, bounces off his hands. Rod Carter was the pressure guy for the University of Miami, number 91. Well, still a, what's it going to be, third and short situation. Uh, Gators have an excellent chance to pick up another first down. The clock is ticking down, 134. The clock is stopped with that uh, incomplete pass. The Gators are obviously thinking, can we score before the half? Can we get some more points before this half is over? Slot offense to the right side being run by Florida. Now there are whistles as Bell takes the snap. Could be for too much time. No, I think there was I five seconds jumped. left on the clock when they blew the whistle. I don't know what the problem is. Looks like somebody might have jumped. We'll, we'll just see that call. Just well, we're, we're waiting for him to give it to us. Minute 34 to play first half, and the Hurricanes are leading by a 7-6 to six score on the University of Florida Gators at Florida Field. What? Interesting so far this afternoon. What do you call that? An inadvertent whistle, right? I like it when the referee tries to erase the fact that we threw up. You can't hide in front of almost <laughs> 80,000 people. Though. Third, less than a yard, ball on the 46-yard line as Kerwin Bell with the eye formation throws a quick pass and it's complete to Wickman into Miami territory. First down, Gators. Kerwin Bell walks up to the line of scrimmage, decides that that's the play he wants to call, so he makes a checkoff. It's his good friend, Brett Wickman, who's going to be a doctor one of these days. It's going to be Dr. Wickman. Brett with a terrific hands makes the reception first down for the Gators at the 49 yard line of Miami as Kerwin Bell again has the time to throw this time and delivers again along the near sideline at the 37 yard line Tobit Bain takes him out so Bain's been on the coverage both times been there but Whitman's a very very sure-handed possession receiver and they stop the clock not only catch the football move the chains but get out of bounds stop the clock that sideline right now is on the university of florida's offensive team that sideline is your teammate the wide receivers have to realize that catch the ball get out of bounds if you can 54 seconds to play first half and the give off goes to wayne williams who cuts the field and to the 32 yard line before he is brought down by dan Rosilio, 93. well that gator offense is Clicking on all cylinders right now. 39, 38 seconds. Hurry up. Uh, the play is called at the line of scrimmage. Kerwin Bell looks to throw and does again. This time he's got Wickman again. He steps out at the 23-yard line. Tolbert Bain is right there with him. Now, Tolbert Bain's not going to let that happen all day long. He's going to realize that Britt Wickman's not going to run by him. He doesn't have that kind of speed. He's going to tighten up and play Wickman. He just can't let that happen. He knows he can't run by him, so he's going to have to tighten up. And he might tighten up, and Kerwin might try and get the ball out there. And Bain is going to be looking for that interception. We'll be back with more. But first, we're going to take time to Miami, Florida in possession. 31 seconds to play in the first half. The Hurricanes have a 1.7 to 6 lead on the Gators. 31 seconds is a lot of time, too, Jim Gallagher. Split backfield behind. Kerwin Bell. Bell drops. Looks, he's going to go long for the end zone, and they had to let that one go because there was good coverage on number 21, Darrell Willard, down there, and there are flags on the field. Looks like the tight end, Rodney Jones, got a little anxious, missed the snap count. That play didn't count from the start. Kerwin realized that, so he just dumps it as far as he can into the crowd. 25 seconds left on the clock. In the first half, Galen Hall talks with Kerwin Bell. What a great career he had as the offensive coordinator at the University of Oklahoma, becoming the offensive coordinator at Florida and then the head coach. And what a super performance he has turned in. And the nice thing about that relationship, uh, Galen Hall, Kerwin Bell, Galen was a quarterback. He knows what Kerwin's looking for. He knows what Kerwin should be looking for. And he's talking to him. The Gators, three penalties, 20 yards. That's a crucial penalty right there. First and 15, the ball now on the 28-yard line for Florida. As Kerwin Bell gives off on the delay, draw the way Williams to the feet. Mike's lower to the 25-yard line, but brought down. Mm -hmm. All right, the clock is ticking, 15, 14. Uh, Kerwin's got to be aware of where the clock is. Nine seconds. Nine 
seconds with nine seconds florida has called a timeout and kerwin bell comes mm -hmm. across to talk with galen hall mm -hmm. line coach here at the university of florida for so many years and a great line himself on his playing day bill maggio uh, played here at the university of florida when i came to gainesville and he's done a super job since he left Clint high school in tampa to join the staff here at the university of florida and develop these terrific young offensive linemen talking about bill maggio 32 yard line is where the kick will come from so we're talking about a 42 yard attempt by jeff dawson or i guess they'll spot it down they say it's a 31 yard line so it'll be a 41 yard attempt by dawson waiting for the snap and his foot is into it and it is good and the university of florida has taken the lead with five seconds to play in the first half the Hurricanes of Miami, 9-7. Jeff Dawson boots it through. A 41-yard field goal for Dawson and the University of Florida Gators take a two-point lead on Miami. Three for three for that young field goal kicker. You can't ask for more than that. He's done a great, great job during his career here at the University of Florida and certainly this afternoon he has. The University Police giving Florida that lead. Brett and Wickman, too, uh, Jim, uh, deserves a big pat on the back for that series, giving young Dawson a chance to kick that third field goal. What he came up with three uh, receptions, I believe, in that one drive. Now we'll see what Miami is going to do with five seconds to play in the first half. John David Francis will boot it off. He takes his time about getting it ready. One thing about John David, you don't hurry him very much. <laughs> well, he wants to get in his camera time, you know. He's, That's right. He's only on the field so long. So. <laughs> he wasn't born yesterday. He knows where that camera is. Waiting to move to the football. And he does. It is a squib kicker and will bounce, and J.C. Penny picks it up to 7, bobbles it. Now he's at the 10. He's at the 15, the 20. Coming cross field, he's at the 25-yard line, and he is dragged down at the 32-yard line by the University of Florida, number 63, Tracy Daniels. So Daniels... 74,875 in attendance. A new record, Jim Gallagher, this afternoon here in Florida Field. Of course, over the years, this game has certainly brought a lot of people in the stadiums in Florida, Miami, and Tampa. Last year, it was an Orange Bowl record crowd when these two teams got together, breaking uh, Super Bowl crowds, Miami Dolphin crowd records, whatever crowd record you wanted to refer to, the Gators and the Canes drew more people into the Florida field. Jimmy Johnson walking, uh, looking for some of his players to give some encouragement to. We'd like to tell you this telecast of Gator football is being seen by fans all over the state of Florida and the United States. No matter where you are, we'd like to hear from you. Send us a card or letter with a self-addressed stamped envelope, and we'll send you a Gator bumper sticker and a Gator keychain. Your comments are also welcome. Send your card or letter to Gator Television Network, Post Office Box 14485, Gainesville, Florida, 32604. And we really do appreciate hearing from you. Well, we get and word your nice comments. Yeah, Jim, excuse me. We get word from the truck that young Gator tailback Tony Lomack from Tallahassee Leon will not play in the second half. And if you'll recall, I think it was Daryl Oliver that got ejected for a personal foul for the teams late in the second quarter. So both teams now missing one of their outstanding running backs. We get ready to kick off and begin the second half of play. And kicking off for the University of Miami will be number three, Mark Selig, a senior from Apopka, as he boots the football high and deep. Kerry Watkins, Pensacola, takes it for the Gators. He's at the 10, he's at the 15-yard line, and down at the 18-yard line, and bring him down for the Miami Hurricanes, number two, Basil Proctor, from the special teams unit. So it'll be first down and 10, the ball on the 18-yard line for the Florida Gators. And here is the quarterback comparison we're keeping you up with this afternoon. Testaverde, 3 for 11. 6'3", 
39 yards, one touchdown. Kerwin Bell, 8 of 16 for 61 yards, no touchdowns. I was talking with David Steele, the play-by-play -play voice of the Gators on uh, the University of Florida radio program, and we were talking during the halftime break of what vicious hitting in the secondary, and that's one reason there's not that many completions because the secondaries are hitting so viciously. The give off goes to Wayne Williams, and Wayne Williams across the 20 to the 22-yard line before he's brought down by Miami's number 99, Winston Moss. I don't think Ricky Natil has touched the ball this afternoon, has he? And that's one of the, the uh, Gator uh, keys to success. Get the ball in the hands of Ricky Natil. Card has won the three of the last four meetings between the two clubs, but the Gators lead the series with 25 wins in 47 games. 25 and 22, the record. Second down, six, all on the 22. As Bell looks to throw and does, and he's got Mateo. First down for the Gators at the 37-yard line. Don Ellis, number 29, sophomore left corner man from Fort Myers, makes the hit. Mateo so far in 86, three catches, averaging a little over 18 yards per catch. What do they say? Ask and he shall receive. We're talking about <laughs> Ricky Mateo not touching the football. He might have gone back in the halftime and said, get that ball to me. And Kerwin delivers, and Ricky comes up with a big play. First down, Gators. At the 38-yard line, as we begin the second half of play at Florida Field, it is Wayne Williams, the ball carrier, from Titusville as he goes straight up the middle, and there's a flag on the play. Wayne Williams was the leading runner uh, for the Gators in the first half, getting 43 net yards and 10 carries with a long run of 19. And right there, he had a big chance to break another one. And oh, my goodness, Jimmy Davis is down on the field. Davis has been an excellent player for the uh, Gators, the 280-pound junior from Apopka. The call was against the Hurricanes of Miami. Uh, and Jimmy, so that's going to cost him. Excuse me, Jim. Uh, Jimmy Davis has done a fine job in that offensive line. Played just about every play for the Gators last year. He was pushed this year by Charlie Wright, who came as a junior college transfer for that starting position, but uh, we don't know why the personal foul was called, but it was called against the team. Gators are moving into hurricane territory. So that gives them great field position, and we'll talk about that when we come back after these local messages. Completed too many here at the University of Florida like that, but he refuses to give up on the play. Almost sacked, does a 360. Comes up with a catch, an 11 yard gain. I don't understand that one, but it did work. The football is at the 30. It's first and 10 for the Gators. Miami with four down linemen. George Myra Jr., the middle linebacker, right in that middle gap. Willard is the motion man and uh, flags on the field at the snap. And it looked like illegal procedure against somebody. Somebody moved. We'll see who the call is going to go against in a minute. I think it's probably going to go against Florida. Yeah, the whole offensive unit, uh, Kerwin saw the clock ticking down. Uh, he was trying to check off, did not get the play called, and miscommunication, illegal procedure, another penalty against the Gators. Kerwin Bell right now, 10 of 18 for 87 yards passing. Now at the 35-yard line for Florida. They lead 9 to 7 on three field goals by Jeff Dawson. Cedric Smith, 39, the up back behind Bell. As Bell gives to Wayne Williams, and Wayne Williams comes across on the right side and goes to the call at the 32, maybe picked up three yards on the carry. Brought down by number 63, or rather 99, Winston Moss. And down 12, ball at the 32. Wayne Williams, 55 yards this afternoon on 13 carries. Frank McCarthy, 53, Lighthouse Point, Florida, up over the football. Irwin Bell, the signal caller, Eric Hodges, 10, the motion man. And Bell looks to throw, and Bell, he's got Hodges, and Hodges goes out of bounds on the Miami sideline at the 22. Don Ellis in the coverage right there, and Hodges just beat him on the break. Kerwin delivered a beautiful pass. Hodges did not break stride, but oh my goodness, looks like a flag on the play. Here we see Kerwin. Watch, Hodges does not break stride. Full 
Gallup. He catches the ball, turns up the sideline. An 11-yard game, but it looks like it's going to be for naught. What do we have on the offense? A penalty of what nature? Negated because the uh, flag on the play, and it's going to go against Florida. You can see the way they're getting ready to march it off right now. 12 minutes and 4 seconds to play in the third period. Florida leading by 2 points, 9-7. Football is going to move all the way back to the 43-yard line. It was a hold, and it was against the Gators. So there you see uh, the Gators, and they, a lot of the fans there have their headsets on, as you mentioned earlier. They're listening to David Steele and Mark Carlson on the radio broadcast. Second and 12 on the 43, as Kerwin Bell operates for Florida at the quarterback spot. Split backfield behind him, slot offense, give off to Wayne Williams, stacked up. No, they get stopped right at the line as Miami sniffed that one out. Dan Stubbs, 96, good play for the Hurricanes of Miami. Well, the Gators hope to catch the teams possibly in a blitz or doing some games where the linemen twist and loop and uh, open up a quick crack for the running back on a quick draw, but it just didn't work as we see some of the team band members rocking and rolling six-yard line as Bell drops the pass. He's got time, and he's going to get sacked unless he unloads, and it's picked off by the University of Miami. A run back here in front of the Florida bench comes to the 46-yard line. A flag on the play. Darrell Fullington, number 19, a junior from New Smyrna Beach, the defensive back from Miami, took it down and ran it back. Kerwin thought he could sneak the ball in there to his tight end. Jones, but Jones was not able to even get his hand on the ball, and Pullington made the interception. Kerwin did knock him out of bounds. There is a penalty. Was it before the interception or after the That's interception? That's what we got to see. The Miami defense and the Gator offense are staying on the field, so it looks like uh, the interception is negated. Oh, my goodness. What a big break for the University of Florida right there. They give the ball up, but then they get it back because of the penalty. Roughing the passer against the defense. That's the call, and it moves the football to the 30 run yard line. Let's see if we can pick it up right here. Who the culprit is. Looks like he delivers an elbow to Kerwin's jaw before the interception. You see, he hit him before the ball was intercepted by Fullington, so therefore the Gators maintain possession. So that brings up first down for the Gators of Florida at the 31 yard line. Kerwin Bell's give off goes to Octavius Gould, and Gould inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. Short game, Jerome Brown, 98. A big senior right tackle for Miami who's played so well for the games this afternoon, makes the tackle. Jerome Brown might be the best defensive lineman we'll see all season long as we follow the Gators every Saturday afternoon. He's a terrific ball player. Octavius Gould picked up 28 yards in the first half, and he continues to run effectively here in the third quarter. So many good athletes on the field. Second down, eight. Ball on the 29-yard line now for the Florida Gators. As Kerwin Bell is at the lips. And the ball drops on the turf. And Darrell Fullington, 19, came blowing in. And the fumble is recovered by Miami. And so the Hurricanes take it over at the 40-yard line. A big play for them. Big number 99, Winston Moss. Kerwin never saw the blitz coming. He was looking to the left. Pullington came from his right. See Kerwin? He's Kerwin Bell's looking to the left. Never sees it. Never sees Pullington coming. Second turnover for the University of Florida. Second fumble turnover. Miami gets the football with 10-15 to play third quarter. They trail. The Gators lead 9-7. Any Testaverde rolling out. Testaverde throws. And it is complete into Florida territory. And there's a flag on that play. Completion to Charles Henry, number 82. A tackle by Adrian White, number two. Well, they call Adrian White for a late hit. Uh, Charles Henry, has, his knee had touched the turf. I don't know if he heard a whistle or not. But the ball is automatically dead when the knee hits the turf. Here we see Tessa Verde making a little bit of a draw action. tight end. Charles Henry, the knee goes down. Perhaps they called spirit.
fourth quarter. Testaverde with a split backfield. He's got receivers left and right. Throws out in the flat, and he's got his man, Michael Irvin, who stays on his feet despite getting a lot of punishment. Michael Irvin, and uh, it is Jarvis Williams taking him down. Irvin fighting after he catches the ball, refusing to go down when Jarvis Williams hit him, and Scott Armstrong came over to finish off the play. Testaverde picks up a nice five yards right there. Second down five, ball on the 28 yard line now for Miami. Irvin 47, top of your screen. Good backfield. Smith and Bratton. As Testaverde looks and throws out in the flat, he's got Irvin again. Mulberry takes him out just at the 20-yard line, and Miami picks up another first down. Now the teams are going to their favorite receiver, sophomore Michael Irvin. Tremendous future for this young man. He only caught one pass against the Gators last year, but then from that point on, he was their leading receiver for the team. seconds to play in the third period. The Gators trying to protect their 9-7 to seven lead, and the give-off goes to Melvin Bratton. Melvin Bratton 5, still on his feet, and into the end zone is a hurricane score. So suddenly, we've got a 13-9 to nine game, and the Hurricanes line up for the extra point. And they're going to go for the extra point because Seelig is on the field. They're not going to try for the two. And there's an injured Gator on the field, Jim Gallagher. Uh, looks like the officials are going to call a timeout for a moment. We can't pick up the number right now, but the Keens did a great job right there giving Melvin Bratton a little bit of an opening, and he used that great jitterbug talent of his to actually jump laterally, three to five yards, and then continue down the sideline. Ricky Mulberry is down to 32, the junior from Palatka, as the... Uh, Team physicians work over him, and we'll be back with more. The first timeout for these local messages. So Ricky Mulberry walking off the field under his own power with Chris Patrick, the trainer, and Dr. Pete and Delicato, and uh, so now the University of Miami. It's ready to try for the extra point. And it looks now with Testaverde in the game as if they were going for two. They had originally brought out Mark Seelig after the 20-yard touchdown run by Melvin Bratton. And they're going for the two. I Smith and Bratton behind Testaverde. Testaverde looking to throw. Throws and it is knocked away by the Gators. Knocked away by Arthur White, number 43. The score remains 13 to nine. We'll be right back after these messages. Five plays, 60 yards, a minute and eight seconds possession time, 20 yard touchdown run by Melvin Ratton does the job. And Miami is up by 13 to nine. They try for two and the Florida stops the try. And so Mark Seelig Number three from Apatka High School kicks off. It is deep, and Kerry Watkins takes it at the three. He's at the five, at the ten. He's at the 15-yard line and cuts across the 20 and up between the 21 and the 22 before he is brought down. Number 44 making the hit for Miami, Steve Staffler, and also number 48, Bubba McDowell. Here we see the two-point attempt. Uh, Testaverde's looking for Irvin, I think, and... Arthur White gets out there. No, he's going to Melvin Bratton, who slipped out of the backfield. There we see the five-play, 60-yard drive. Of course, it was helped by the 15-yard penalty, uh, unnecessary roughness called against the Gators. But nonetheless, the Canes look good on that offensive series. First and 10 on the 21-yard line now for the Gators, and the give-off goes to Wayne Williams, who rips to the 30-yard line before he is brought down by Miami. Winston Moss making the tackle. Now the Gators are opening up some good holes right there. That offensive line continues to work. And up front, uh, Bob Sims does a nice job. Here comes Williams to lead back. Wayne Williams, the tailback. 
second and a yard. And the give off is going to go to Anthony Williams as he fights forward. Let's see if he's got the first down. Jerome Brown brings him down, number 98. Anthony Williams out of Tampa Plan High School picks up the first down for the Gators of Florida. And they keep their drive going. Wayne Williams has had 15 carries for 61 yards this afternoon. Now that's a very decent production when you consider the talent of the defenses out there this afternoon. Jimmy Davis, number 67, being worked on by the, looked at and talked to by the uh, University of Florida medical staff. Char Charlie Wright, number 60, is in as a substitute for Jimmy Davis right now. At the right guard position as Kerwin Bell looks to throw. And he is brought down way behind the line of scrimmage by Miami. And Stubbs, 96 getting in there to uh, make the tackle on Kerwin. Getting some help there too from Kerwin Jones. Mm -hmm. That brings up second down for Florida. And 16 yards to go, the ball on the 26-yard line. The Canes of Miami have scored here in the third period to lead at 13 to nine. The pitch is going to go to Wayne Williams coming to the near side across the 30 to the 31-yard line. And Stubbs again gets credit for the tackle for the University of Miami. Winston Moss, who sat out last week's game with uh, South Carolina because of uh, possible NCAA violations back in action starting this afternoon. Doing a nice job from a strong linebacker position. 6'3", 236, Winston Moss. Throws downfield, and it is high, intended for Wickman, and goes as incomplete. You know, the winning attitude starts with individual performance combined with a strong team morale. Mid-state federal savings and loan admires his spirit and is proud to be the exclusive sponsor of the Most Valuable Player of the Game Award, which will be announced at the conclusion of today's game. Mid-state federal is Florida's full-service financial center. You're looking at Perriman, the return man, 33, McAndrew, Number 16 is the kicker for Florida. The line of scrimmage is the 30th, fourth down and 12 officially. As Jamie McAndrew, the freshman kicker, boots it away. And it's going to go way high. And Perriman will take it down to 29. And he is brought down at the 30-yard line. Oh, did Florida get down under that kick? And number 33, Dwayne Glover got down there. Along with number 16 for the Gators. McAndrew, the kicker, doing an excellent job. 41-yard punt. Hurricanes starting on their own 30-yard line. David Kintai, 11, talking with Jimmy Johnson. Kintai, a backup wide receiver. High formation being used by the Hurricanes on first and 10 at the 31-yard line. And the give-off again is going to go to Bratton. And Bratton is stacked up as he hits the line of scrimmage. Might have got a tough yard before Arthur White. A big junior inside linebacker from Frostproof makes the hit. Excellent play by Arthur White stepping up to fill the hole as Melvin Bratton almost broke loose again. Bratton was a triple jump and hurdle state champion track athlete in his high school career. And you don't want to turn that young man loose or you'll never see him until he gets in the end zone. <laughs> Second and ten at the 31-yard line. Testaverde going long and it is incomplete. Intended for Brian Blades, number nine, deep downfield, but goes as incomplete. You're talking about a pro passing attack. That was strictly timing. They were going on the yard marker. Testaverde knew exactly where Blades was going to make his break. Blades never even saw the ball. The ball was in the air. Had it been delivered a little bit closer to him, he would have come up with the reception very easily. Melvin Bratton, a great afternoon, almost 60 yards today. Third and 10 on the 31-yard line as Vinny Testaverde hands off on the counter to Bratton, who has stacked up. Florida Scott Armstrong, 57, right there, along with Arthur White. The two linebackers bring him down. Melvin Bratton right now, Jim Gallagher, 58 yards on eight rushing attempts. Testa Verde, 6 of 15 in the passing game for 64 yards. Jeff Beagles, the kicker, Ricky Mateel, the return man. The rocket, number 89. Fourth and 11, 
Ball at the 30. And the kick is going to come off the 20-yard line. It is high and fair catch called for by Ricky Mathiel wisely giving Florida good field position between the 24 and the 25-yard line. The Eagles really got a hold of that one. Oh, that was a boomer by the Eagles. Anytime you can get that ball in the air where it cannot be returned, you're really helping your ball club, and that's what Beagles did. Just an excellent punt. 45-yarder, no return. What good does it do to punt at 45 yards if the opponent's going to return at 15? Beagles just doing an excellent job. Here come the Gators, first and 10. The ball at the 24-yard line now. They trail the Hurricanes of Miami by four. The Canes up 13 to nine. Five minutes and two seconds to play in the third period. As Kerwin Bell, under some pressure, jumps a quick one out to Wayne Williams. He's at the 30, and he's across the 35. Loose ball, and running out of bounds with it on the near sideline is number 18, Colbert Bain. And there was a flag on the play at the 34. Tolbert Bain, a junior from Miami Northwestern, picks up the loose ball and runs out of bounds with it. We talked about vicious hitting in the secondary, uh, and there was another indication. The Keens popping that ball loose. with the football gets to the 45 yard line so get some tough yardage inside Wandy West of the big sophomore right tackle from Bell Glade makes the tackle Keith Williams also doing a nice job up front 6'4", 250 pound senior from Milton uh, Gator defense needs to rise up right now or the teams are going to move in for another score second down seven the ball on the 45 yard line right now Split backfield with a slot offense to the right side. Urban is the slot back for Miami's Hurricane. Sitting up on a 13-9 lead, and they're going to call a timeout. And so we'll take timeout for these messages. Second down and seven. The ball on the 45-yard line right now. The Hurricanes of Miami are in possession of the football. They're in Florida territory. 4-14 to play third quarter, and they're up 13 to 9. Vinny Testaverde looking at his wideouts. Takes the snap. Under pressure, delivers. And he is drilled as he catches it. Alfredo Roberts, the tight end, catches the football, but he was hit and brought down right away by Adrian White, number two. Yeah, the safety's on that tight end. That's his responsibility. So it'll be third down, four, ball on the 42-yard line. Testaverde doing a nice job of checking off right there, picking up six or seven. Big third down, big third down. Well, here it comes. As Vinny Testaverde has the time to unload and does, and it is incomplete. It was intended downfield for Warren Williams to come out of the backfield. Goes is incomplete. And so that brings up fourth down, and the Gators get the football back, and the Florida defense is held. Standing ovation for the Gator defense. A critical series right there. Miami seemingly in control here late in the third quarter, having just scored, having great field position, but the Gator defense doing a nice job. Fourth down and four, the ball at the 42. Eagles is the kicker. His punch goes high, high, high. But it's going to be a little bit short and bounces down at the 20-yard line and bounces up to the 22. So Florida gets the football at the 22 yard line. It'll be first and 10 now for the Gators. Right now, total offense, 165 for the Hurricanes, 170 for the Gators. The Gators just have not been that consistent with their offensive drive. They need to put some consistency together on offense if they're going to put points on the board. First down and 10 on the 22 yard line now for the Gators. A 20 yard boot. Motion man is Hodges T. 
10. As Bell gives to Octavius Gould, who carries to the 27-yard line. So a five-yard carry for the young man from Jersey, Benny Blaze. The safety makes the hit. Two Blades brothers playing for Miami. Benny, 36, and Brian, number nine. They're both juniors, but Brian is older. Charlie Wright, red shirt. Excuse me, Jim. Uh, Charlie Wright doing a nice job there. The young offensive guard in for Jimmy Davis. Throwing a fine block on that run. Sophomore from San Juan Capistrano, California. Eric Hodges, 10, is the motion man, is the give off on the draw. Goes to the tailback, go, and he is really brought down by Bill Hawkins, number 54, the sophomore right defensive end from Hollywood, Florida, along with Randy Shannon, 22, and Don Ellis, 29. Hawkins, 6'6, 245, built a lot like uh, Ted Hendricks, who was a uh, great All American in the 60s for the Hurricanes. Big, tall, player third down and 11 now on the 21 yard line for florida with two minutes and 12 seconds to play in the third period the kings lead 13 to 9. kerwin bell brought down way behind the line of scrimmage by dan stubbs 96 but there was a flag on that play at the 14.
is ticking away. Just a little over a minute left to play in this third quarter. The Hurricanes of Miami up 13 to 9 on the Gators of Florida at Florida Field. Well, third down conversion was terrible for both teams in the first half. Let's see if the Keens can convert right here. Third and nine. Vinny Testaverde, number 14 to throw. He does, looking for the end zone, and it is incomplete. He was looking for Melvin Bratton, number five, running a post out of the backfield. The balls is incomplete. That brings up fourth down. Boy, he had him for an instant, too. Arthur White was responsible there, and Arthur looked like he dropped off the coverage just as Bratton was breaking loose, and Oliver was breaking his neck to get over there to hit him. He didn't know if he was going to catch the ball or not. Mark Seeley, the senior from Mount Dora, Florida, went to uh, high school in Okaka will attempt the field goal. It will come from the 25, so it's a 35-yard attempt. David Kintai will be the holder. There's the snap. Felix foot is into it. It's got the distance, and it is good. And so the Hurricanes tack some more points onto their lead, and they lead now by a score of 16 to 9. Seven points will tie this game up in a hurry. Uh, obviously, the game very much in doubt, but the Hurricanes, we talk about that ebb and flow, and here the Hurricanes come out very strong in the third quarter, taking control of this ball game. 43 seconds left in the third quarter. The Canes lead 16 to 9. Further than that, brought down by Benny Blades and George Myra Jr. Oh, big play by the Keen. 
seven, and the Gators are going to kick McAndrew, standing back on the ten, and gets a good one off. Perriman catches it on the fly at the 35. He's at the 37. Comes up there at the 40, and across the field. He's recovered in it. Could be Florida's. We'll see when they on file. Flag on the play, though, at the 38. They're going to give it to Miami, and there are flags on the play at the 38 yard line. He touches the football right at the line of scrimmage. He might have uh, tripped on the play, but anyway, no matter whether he tripped or not, Clifford Charlton was there to make him go down. He was a junior from Tallahassee Leon High School. He had a great game last week against Georgia Southern. now the 
they take Alonzo Highsmith down after a short game down to the 15-yard line. Well, that was a 40-yard punt, and then there was a minus 11 on the lost fumble. The Gators doing a nice job there on the first down. It looks like there's another injury on the field. Somebody down on the field. left to play in the football game. It's second down and six at the 15, and we will be right back. But first, we'll take time out for these messages. Arthur White was the young man who was down on the field for the Gators, has come off the field now under his own power. Turnovers this afternoon, Miami two, Florida four. Second and six at the 15. Final quarter between the Gators and the Hurricanes. Vinny Testaverde looking at Florida's defense. Florida now with the four down linemen. They're in the nickel as Testaverde looks to the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown. Michael Irvin, number 47, the sophomore. Flanker catches the touchdown pass to the Hurricanes of Miami. Beautiful pass route by Michael Irvin and Testaverde throwing the ball before he even made the break. Ricky Mulberry not able to cover Irvin. He does a little celebrating on the sideline right now. That was a big six points for the Kings here early in the fourth quarter. Mark Seeley will attempt the extra point. David Kintai will be the holder. Waiting for the snap. Seelig's foot is into it, and it is good, but there was a flag on the play. And we'll be right back after this. They're going to mark the... Uh right now, Jim, on the kickoff, I, evidently a dead ball foul, or it doesn't matter on a field goal, on an extra point opportunity. They come back and march it off uh, on the kickoff, and now the Kings will kick from the 50 instead of the 35. So Selig will be the kicker. situation but that's not the case the Gators have one of the best if not the best quarterback in college football so they're capable of catching up Miami with a big edge obviously right now Felix Cook kicks it it bounces along and it's picked up by Florida and run back across the 20 across the 25 and up to the 28 yard line by Cedric Smith number 39 he's the freshman running back from Enterprise Alabama two plays 19 yards 43 seconds the possession time Michael Irvin caught the 15 yard Vinny Testaverde. Let's take a look at it. Well, you remember the tremendous receiver that Eddie Brown was for the Hurricanes, and they believe Michael Irvin will be that kind of receiver. And you see Mulberry's 10 yards behind him after Irvin made the cut. Just a tremendous pass route, and Testaverde showing his Heisman Trophy quality by delivering the pass. Irwin Bell the throw on first and ten, and it goes out to Cedric Smith, who cannot hang on to the football. Linus Wiggins is at the 28-yard line. 11 minutes and two seconds to play in the football game. Five quarterback sacks, four turnovers this afternoon. Well, the last turnover leading directly to a great field position. You can't let Testaverde reload too often, or he's going to burn you, and he finally did here in the fourth quarter by hitting Urban in the end zone. At the 28-yard line, it remains second down 10. Throws a quick one to Octavius, Octavius Gould, who goes to the 32-yard line. No gain on that play. And Winston Moss makes the tackle for the University of Miami. Erwin Bell looks like he might have injured his hand right there. The Gators come out with three wide receivers. That means there's no tight end near that offensive line. And you'll see the defensive ends for the Hurricanes widen out. Get that angle on the offensive tackle right there. And they're just beating around the corner with the great speed. Watch the guys from the outside. See what kind of pressure they put on Kerwin Bell. Third down seven at the 31-yard line. The teal 89, the motion man, as Kerwin Bell looks for somebody to throw to. Throws to Drew Whitman. He's going first down at the 31-yard line. Whitman, the senior wide receiver from right here in the 
city of Gainesville, went to Oak Hall High School, as Jim pointed out earlier. He is a uh, pre-med major, will be a fine doctor someday. 4-0, great point ever. Irwin's had trouble getting to his wideouts. We said that Teal has only caught one pass all day. Whitman's caught three or four. I think only five passes going to the wideouts. The rest of the reception being dumped off to running back. At the 41-yard line, it's first down for the Gators as Bell's pass is blocked by the big hand of Jerome Brown. Give goes to Octavius Gould, who's down inside the one-yard line. My goodness, what a big turnaround that was. You're talking about uh, giveaways, turn turnovers, middle errors. All of a sudden, the Gators, uh, things are looking extremely bleak. They come up with a big interception, and now they're on the one-yard line. Three-quarter yard line, it looks like. Octavius Gould with the top of the eye as Kerwin Bell 
That's the signal. Hodges to the left. Gould the call. And he is stopped by Miami. They were waiting for him right there. Big Dan Stubbs, 96. Stops him right there. Benny Blades, number 36, also there. That wasn't a stop. That was a stuff. S-T-U-F-F. -F. That's what they call that one. So that brings up third down. Less than a yard to go. Ball on the one. Third and goal for the Gators. That was an 18-yard uh, run after the interception by Pat Moore. Now the Gators are faced with third down on the one. They trail 23 to nine. Same eye formation again. Kerwin Bell this time holding on to the football. Oh, it is a touchdown for the Gators as Rodney Jones, number 87, catches the football from the tight end spot. Sophomore from Tampa Plant High School. You're talking about have your heart in your throat. Kerwin could have run that ball in, but he decided to put it in the air because Rodney Jones was so wide open, and Rodney makes the big, key, critical reception. So now we've got a 23 to 15 ball game. Let's take a look at it. Watch Kerwin get outside right here. There's the contained man. He doesn't do his job. Number 29 allows Kerwin to get outside. That was Donald. They're catching Miami off guard. The Gators are going for two. They're going for two. Here is Kerwin Bell with the signals. The tail 89, the motion man. Bell looking, looking for the end zone, being chased. Races over to the other side of the field. Looking downfield, throws and throws the ball high. There's a flag on the play at the three. Two flags on the right at the three yard line. Well, the Gators are thinking if they don't get two right now, they'll go for it again should they score another touchdown. And either time would be to their benefit, obviously. Let's see what they're going to call. The illegal procedure against the Gators decline. Gators trail by eight points. So this is an interesting turn of events as the Hurricanes of Miami sit up on Florida 23-15. Florida making a great comeback on a big play as they intercept the football, run it back down inside the 10-yard line, and then score. Yeah, it's an unexpected turn of events. Who, who would think that Testaverde would give the ball up deep in his own territory? But he sure did. The Gators did get the seven that they needed desperately. And again, now they trail by eight. Obviously, uh, there's plenty of time for field goals, fumbles, interceptions. Anything can happen, but eight points. The game is still in doubt. The teams were in control, but now the Gators are very much back in the ball game. Seven minutes and 11 seconds left to play. That drive, seven yards, three plays, one minute, 13 seconds, a one-yard touchdown pass by Kerwin Bell, who continues to chalk up those touchdown passes in the record book. So, there's over seven more minutes of football to be played. John David Francis lacing on his shoe. He is the kick man. Let's take a look now at the two-point attempt. Again, we don't see the illegal procedure. Kerwin does a nice job of trying to escape. He's just going to wish and hope this one in the end zone. The play broke down very early. The Keen's doing a nice job covering all the different alternatives Kerwin was looking for. Just a nice defensive effort by the Hurricanes to stop that two-point effort. The Gators the kick and it's going to be taken by jc penny at the eight and set the 10 to 15 to 20 across the 20 across the 25 and out of bounds in front of the flags on the play flags on the play as he comes out as he crosses the 30 yard line number 55 danny mariscal middle linebacker for the Kings, possibly involved in an altercation there on the gator bench let's see who's at fault are going to mark it off uh, one way or the other, 15 yards. Uncertain right now who the culprit is. Seven minutes and five seconds to play. And it's going against Miami. First foul against Miami as they walk it off. Well, J.C. Penny doing a nice job finding a little hole there is. Gets knocked out of bounds. And, oh, there's the late hit in the back, no less. It was 
it was obvious. Three plays, seven yards, 113. Rodney Jones, one yard pass. Two point conversion, not good. Well, we all know what a physical game football is, but it's also a mental game, and you just can't do silly things like that. You know, you got to have your head in the game. Hurricanes could have been out on the 30 yard line, a little bit of breathing room. Now they're backed up on their 15. J.C. Penny making a nice return to the 30 yard line. Nullified, moving it back to the 15. Football deep in their own territory at the 15. It's first and 25. The giveoff is going to go to Highsmith, and Highsmith will stop as he tries to turn the corner outside. On the left side, Jarvis Williams right there, along with Scott Armstrong. Well, here we see the big bruising fullback, 234 pounds, and there's Scott Armstrong and Jarvis Williams meeting him at the pass. Ron Wilton, Arthur White over there to add their assistance. Three-yard gain to the 18-yard line. It's second down, 22 right now. Terry Watkins, number four, in at the left cornerback position, replacing Ricky Mulberry at this point. Oops, somebody jumped. Let's see who it was. You know, we looks talk, like it's going to go against Miami. We talked about it, the opening poise and being under control of your emotions and not doing silly and crazy things. Well, the games right now are kind of falling apart a little bit. Uh, you can't do this when you're playing an opponent like the University of Florida in the hostile environment where the noise, the volume will be turned up every time you make a mistake. But the Kings have made two mistakes in a row right now. All they're doing is going in reverse. So that's going to move that football back to the 13. It'll be second down and 27. Well, that's 27 yards to go. That's a cab ride. Give off on the delayed draw is going to go to Hansmith, and he is stopped as he crosses the 15 to the 16-yard line by Armstrong and Keith Williams. I think Keith Williams doing a nice job. He's a senior. He's the Gators answer to Jerome Brown. Keith Williams will have a potential pro career, probably a high draft choice. Jerome Brown, an Outland Trophy candidate. Third down and 24 now. Yeah, third and 24. 17 yard line, 559 left to play. The Hurricanes trying to protect the 23 15 lead. The Gators desperately want to get the football back. Testaverde looks for somebody. He's been chased and he goes long, long, long for Behrman, who catches it way deep down the sideline at the 32 yard line of Florida. What a toss that was. Glover cannot believe that Perriman gets behind him and Lewis Oliver cannot get over there in time. Oliver's got terrific speed. He underestimates the pass himself. Perriman just comes up with a fantastic play, obviously a critical first down pickup and a magnificent effort by Vinny Testaverde. They're putting it down right between the 33 and the 34. trying to turn it on the right side. He's and it is Jarvis Williams, number 26. I can't believe this. Can you believe what you're seeing here? It's incredible. You know, he's had two interceptions and then this. Well, the emotions that you experience as a fan watching the game, one man's feast is another man's famine. The Hurricanes are feasting in one instant, and now the Gators uh, have turned that feast into a famine. Look at the ball. All he's trying to do is get extra terrific job just trying to get some more yardage and all of a sudden he gives the football up. he's got to get a lot of consideration for the mid-state federal player of the game award Galactica high school turned out some great great athletes over the years first and ten on the 21 now for florida and the give off goes to gold and gold goes straight upfield and carries to the 28 yard line octavia school and Cilio. Makes the hit. There's Jarvis. Yeah, he's had his battles out there this afternoon. He's won some and lost some, but he's won more than he's lost. And you're always going to win some and lose some every time the ball is snapped. He's come up with, what, two interceptions and one fumble recovery. Derwin Bell's give off goes to Gould, and Gould trying to turn outside. Whistles and flags on the play. So we'll see what the call is. I think it's 
going to go against Florida and it could be a motion penalty. It was behind the line of scrimmage. That's what it is. The ball game has taken some interesting turns this afternoon, James. Yeah, again, I cannot believe uh, some of the plays that I've seen, uh, some of the circumstances that have transpired here. Very well in their first possession this uh, drive, the first play of this drive, and now they come up with a penalty and uh, it's march, uh, march them back. Second and seven on the 24 yard line. High formation for the Gators. Irwin Bell throws, and it is incomplete. A little high, it was intended for coming out of the back. Now with that pro offense, and the gift goes to High 
Highsmith. Highsmith fights for yardage into Florida territory across the 50. And down to the 47. Kerry Watkins makes the hit for the Gators along with Scott Armstrong. First down for the Hurricanes. on fourth 
fourth down, short yardage, waiting for the snap, and he gives it to number five, Melvin Bratton, and uh, it looks like he has got the first down. You mentioned Bratton was a uh, state high school long jump and triple jump uh, champion, and he proved his abilities there by leaping over the Gators for the first down. He got the first down. It looked more like Greg Lagana.
this week. Two seconds left to play. And fourth down, and that means that they'll kick away. No, that was a fourth down play. The that was a fourth ball. down play, so Florida gets the football right now. And they've got one play. Well, Doug Flutie did it, didn't he? Yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs>
exactly call the same play. Wish and hope number seven. So as we wait now for the final play of the football game this afternoon at Florida Field. Congratulate Jimmy Johnson, and uh, they talked for just a moment. They're on the coaching staff together at the University of Oklahoma, and both have come to the state of Florida, and both have done an excellent job as head coaches. As Galen Hall walks off the field right now, and there is Vinny Testaverde. Uh, not great, great stats this afternoon, but a win uh, for his team, the Miami Hurricanes. And of course, uh, he will be being boomed very much for the Heisman Trophy. It's something Kerwin Bell certainly had about the same stats as uh, Vinny this afternoon, as the defenses were pretty dominant, and big plays kind of took over in uh, a couple of parts of the game. Now, this is a strange feeling for Galen Hall. He's never lost at Florida Field. What a fantastic record he's had, and uh, the Gators have been so strong at home, and the only kind of team that can come in and take that victory home with them is a team with national championship potential. So let's give the University of Miami uh, credit for their uh, taking advantage of the mistakes when they had the opportunity today to execute when they had to. You know the Gators are bitterly disappointed, but that big SEC opener looms ahead with the University of Alabama. That's coming up in just two weeks, and we'll be back with more here at Florida Field, that first time out with these messages. Subscribe now to Gator Bait, the sports weekly for Gator fans. Call Collect 904-372-1215. Don't wait. Get Gator Bait. We're back at Florida Field where the University of Miami Hurricanes have just defeated the University of Florida Fighting Gators by a score of 23 to 15. The uh, first loss here at Florida Field for Galen Hall as a head coach. Uh, certainly this afternoon, which was promised to be a great offensive firework show, didn't turn out to be that way. It turned out to be a dominant defense by both squads in the uh, first half of play. Uh, an excellent job by Jeff Dawson, the place kicker, who uh, kicked three field goals and uh, kept Florida right there, gave him the lead at the half. And, of course, the uh, Hurricanes making some big plays. Jeff uh, had a tragedy this past week, lost his mother uh, in a battle to cancer, and uh, you know there was a lot of uh, heaviness on his heart out there this afternoon, but what, what does he do? He goes out and kicks three field goals, so we want to send our condolences to the family of Jeff Dawson. Under very, very, as you point out, extremely difficult circumstances. Um, taking a look at some of the other things that happened this afternoon, uh, the University of Florida now has a week off to prepare for Alabama. The University of Miami goes back to Miami, and they'll be facing Texas Tech down there in the Orange Bowl. As far as the Gators are concerned, uh, they got to get that offense really cranked up between now and the Alabama game. Oh, well, it's going to be a big battle with uh, Alabama. Again, that home field advantage uh, has some meaning here at Florida Field, and the Gators uh, hope to crank up this uh, SEC uh, race in a hurry facing the Crimson Tide. You know they're going to come here with the uh, expectations of winning that ball game, especially as they see the Hurricanes were capable of doing it to the Gators. Our thanks to everybody on our production staff this afternoon, and thank you very much for being with us, uh, ladies and gentlemen, here on the University of Florida Fighting Gator Television Network. For Jim Yarborough, I'm Jim Gallagher. Thanks for being with us. Good afternoon. Florida football is brought to you by Armstrong Carpets, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Florida, the Florida Orange Growers,
also by Dairy Farmers Incorporated, Florida's...